And in those things we are to resist the law, but not the authority. It's like a husband telling his wife, listen, we need money, the economy's tough. Go out on the street and prostitute yourself. Now, should she divorce him? No. Should she submit to him? Yes. Should she honor him? Yes. Should she be subject to her lord, her husband? Yes. But not in this matter. Not in the matter that causes her to violate her purity or her conscience or Yahuwah's word. She must, not only should, <laughs> she must violate the law of the land. She ought not to prostitute herself. Why? Because the law of the higher law of the heavenly Yerushalayim says this in this wise: says you shall not cause a a daughter of Israel to become a whore, a zona. The Hebrew word is zona. Whoredom is zanut. You shall not cause a daughter of Zion, a daughter of Israel, to be a zona and to engage in zanut. But yet, when her husband tells her to please cook, when her husband tells her to please clean, when her husband tells her to please raise the children in such a manner, as long as it, her conscience received and fed and nurtured from the word of Yahuwah, and by the word of Yahuwah is not violated, she must respect the authority, but not the law of the land, because that law of the land will cause her to be a zona and bring zanut to a daughter of Israel. I hope you're getting this. I hope you're getting this. I believe you are. But you see how deep you see how deep you see how deep we have to dig. <laughs> the, the ways of Roman society and Greco-Roman culture are so ingrained in us, it's taking hours to dig, to dig through this schmutz and to dig through this garbage and to establish truth. Dr. King understood it, and that's why black people today have their rights. Dr. King understood what it means. To, to be peaceful, peaceful, nonviolent protest, peaceful, nonviolent protest, to submit to the governing authority without to every Jim Crow segregation statute. He understood that. And we need to take the same approach to plural marriage and biblical marriage of our forms. If you who has said it, it's right. It's not my job to argue with his word. My job is to allow his word to rule and to reign in me and over me and through me in righteousness. If we follow you who was ways all the time doing tov, he will guard us from the bad decisions of human authority. Or he will provide a way of escape. So we will not have to fear the abuse of that and by that human authority. At long last, today on the Ramic Channel, at long last, you're hearing the correct and the balanced view of the tension between civil authority and obeying the so-called laws of the land. Let us mature and grow up in Yeshua. Let us learn to discern the difference between obeying authority and power structure while discerning the individual law and statutes in the light of the scripture and its allowances and prohibitions. That is the maturity and the balance Yahuwah seeks among all believers on this delicate issue as it applies to plural marriage in Western society. When done in the light of scripture alone, plural marriage, like monogamy, is a time we can obey the authority. While ignoring barbaric and demonic callings to mandated monogamy or homosexual relationships or marriages, sterilization, abortion, birth control, and other demonic statutes that stand opposed to the ways of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Today that results in marriage and a marriage failure rate of 70%, along with an aborted Israelite population. If the truth be told, another 15% of those who are licensed by the state in mandated monogamy, 70% divorce, but out of the 30, remaining 30%, if the truth be told, 15% are perpetually unhappy, unfulfilled, and simply remain together for convenience, sake, for financial reasons, 
or for the children's sake. Some of you listening to my voice, you may be hearing this and crying, and you may be hearing this and weeping at the same time. And you know that the love and the emotion and the passion for your husband and for your and he for you is gone. And the only reason you're in this is because you can't provide for yourself, and you're you're you, you're staying together for the children or for pressure from family and friends. You just don't want that that kind of divorce and that kind of heartbreak on your resume. But if you were allowed, and if you could provide, you would move on. And if you weren't walking by fear, you would move on. This is not Yahuwah's will for your life. There is a better way. His ways are better. His ways are kadosh. And if your husband has cheated on you, and he has been unfaithful to you, and he doesn't want to get help, and he doesn't want to reconcile, you are entitled to a man of Yahuwah, a man after your own heart, and you can move on in your life, and you do not have to stay miserable, isolated, lonely, and divorced for the rest of your life, because the church... The church teachings on marriage and divorce is a lie from the pit of hell. The Torah provides us all things that pertain to life and to Shabbat guarding piety. Surely biblical marriage, including plural marriage, despite having unique challenges and troubles, does not approach the kind of appalling failure rates we find on state-mandated monogamous relationships. Divorce at 70%, and the remaining 30%, 15% of which are unhappy. So again, we praise Yahuwah for this understanding. And, and you may have to listen to the teaching several times. You may have to rewind it, go over it, and it is important. Matter of fact, it's so important that I'm going to go over it myself. I'm going to sit down, I'm going to pull up a chair, have a glass of orange juice, maybe some strawberries and cream, and I'm going to sit there and I'm going to study and analyze and see because this is a call to a generation to get back to Yahuwah. It's not a call to disobey government. It's not a call to somehow um, lose respect for the United States of America, the last great hope of man on the earth, like Jefferson and Radnor Reagan told, told us. But rather it is a call to return to righteousness. I want to share one more thing with you before we go off the air today. Some things you, you need to know to understand and will help you understand in where we are in our understanding to understand his ways. Any married couple, now this is, what the, this is some of the information that the devil doesn't want you to know, but you need to know. Any married couple in the United States, in any form of a biblical marriage, whether it is monogamy or plural, and if that marriage has a written ketuvah, or a, a contract, a, a, a marital contract, written down on paper, is legally bound to the terms of that contract by federal law. The terms of any contract between two parties or individuals is backed by the United States Constitution and is legally binding and most importantly, no state statute or state licensing can take precedent or overturn it. Let me say that again. If you make a ketuva or a legal contract between you and your wives, four wives, five wives, if you're called to that lifestyle, there is no state statute or no federal uh, law that will take precedence over your contract. I'll explain that to you in a second. This is all part of the great deception where Satan wants you to think that because, quote-unquote, legally, according to their own illegality, you could only have a license with one wife. That's true. That's the way Satan has set it up. However, what Satan doesn't want you to know, and this is why it's a blessing to have you join us on the Romney channel, what he doesn't want you to know is that if you take the time to draw up a ketuvah, any court in the United States will uphold that ketuvah and see you as married, whether it's one contract, three contracts, four contracts or five contracts. See, they don't want you to know this, but that's why you have tuned in to understand these things. For the few who are called to marry more than one wife, hopefully with the blessing of the first wife, you can establish a written marriage contract, we call that a ketuvah, meaning written ketuvah contract, with each and every wife. And every single one of those contracts will be upheld by the courts of the United States <laughs> as the law of the land. It's very ironic. In other words, the states 
won't recognize more than one wife because according to them it's the, it's the law of the land and of course we know we are to respect the authority without respecting every one of their laws which if and when they contradict the freedom of Torah and the allowance